Things got off to a flying start for the under-20s on Friday night. Fly half Sam Costello celebrating within just five minutes. But the Italian pack ultimately proved too powerful, along with the boot of Paolo Garbisi. But yesterday, at the Principality, it was very much Wayne's world. Sevens again! Oh, Nick Tompkins a step, and Nick Tompkins hands up an Oxy and scores! Wales try number five, another one for Josh Adams. The game is done, the win is complete, and what a win it is for Wales. What a win indeed. So it's one apiece after the weekend, but what now? For Wales women, be under no illusion, this is a very tough test for them this afternoon. The company for this match, Carol James, Gemma Rowlands, good to have you both with us. Um, I think, first of all, we need to say where we are with Wales women. Roland Phillips, head coach, still taking some time away from the game, so we have a new coaching setup for this competition. Are we worried at all, Carol, about any uncertainty, how this affects the girls? Well, I would be as a player, and I'm sure more of the most experienced players are as well. They train like full-time professional athletes, and they, they deserve the clarity going forward into the Rugby World Cup. Um, and of course, if this was the men's game, then it wouldn't be acceptable. I do think a positive to take from the situation is a, a new coaching team have named a fresh look squad. So this campaign now will be a real opportunity for the young players to show what they can do going into the World Cup. Yeah, it's all about building, isn't it, at the moment? Well, let's hear then from a member of that new coaching setup. Chris Horseman has been talking to Laura Jane Jones. Chris, it's come around very quickly this one after a very successful autumn campaign. How high are expectations for this year's championship? I think they, they are high, and that's the group that's driving it. You know, we're looking to, to build on what we did in the autumn. We very much look at it as base camp and pushing on to 2021, but we're under no illusions. Today's going to be a really big challenge from a really good uh, Italian side that finished second in the championship. So girls are buzzing at the moment it's a real good feeling actually and what kind of challenge will Italy pose today I think a team that are confident um, very much a team who play a lot of rugby so we, you know we're going to speak very much in the build-up of the game about taking confidence in our preparation but the key for us is uh, building momentum early in the game you know making sure that we're accurate particularly with the weather as well making sure we manage those conditions but more importantly just the uh, girls represent themselves today thanks good luck cheers thank you Chris expecting a big challenge there. It was a draw last year in Italy, but Wales, I'm sure, were kicking themselves that they didn't steal that win. Oh, it was a brilliant contest last year. Um, here we see Jasmine Joyce again, another moment of brilliance from her. Quick footwork and the fend as well. She's got it all. So hopefully today Wales can get the ball to her early and she can do some damage today. Yeah, that was the disallowed try that meant it finished in a draw. Uh, there's going to be a big battle at the back row this afternoon. That's what we're expecting. Alex Callender, let's talk about her. She had a good game against the Barbars and um, she only discovered rugby about three years ago. It's yeah, Alex is an exceptional talent um, that's come through the Welsh seven setup, as you could see in that try against the Barbars. Her ability to read the game and her pace are absolutely outstanding and I'm sure we'll see that on display today. But like you said, the battle of the back rows, we've got Lewis for Wales and Franco for, for Italy, um, both very attritional players who've played against each other in this campaign and in the, Premier, the Tyrells Premiership several times. So I think that'll be a real match to watch today. Yeah, and you've played against her as well in that Tyrells. I, I have. I've played against Franco when she played for Quinns. Um, she's a very strong ball carrier, um, a very big attacking threat, and I think she'll be one to watch for Italy today. The wind is swirling quite a bit here this afternoon, Carol. Is that going to make a difference? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you will have an influence on the kicking game. Robin Wilkins is going to have to kick well today. Uh, we know about the threat that they've got in their back line, the Italians. Um, yeah, so her kicking will have to be on point. Well, it should be a fascinating contest. We're ready to go and join our commentary team for this one, Gemma Hallett and Gareth Charles. Thanks very much, Kat. Yep, yeah, it all kicked off next door yesterday. But first taste for Shewan de Lecraft, the new Welsh skipper, as she leads out Wales to kick off this Six Nations campaign. And those flames are pretty welcome, I can tell you, because it is a biting wind out here. And as we heard, it could make for some very tricky conditions especially when that ball goes in the air. Italy, the surprise package in terms of where they finished the Six Nations last year, with just one defeat against Grand Slam winning England. But as it was, a bit of a mixed bag for Wales. A couple of wins towards the end of the campaign, and they finished in fourth. 
And as usual, we'll kick off with the anthems. Jasmine Joyce and Hannah Jones back in the Welsh squad after playing sevens out in Australia. Kayleigh Powell, Gwentley and Pierce and Kelsey Jones making their first Six Nations starts. Robin Wilkins approaching the 50 cap mark and Shuan Lillicrap, the new captain at eight. A new cap at fullback, Vittoria Ostuni Minuzzi, with the usual fullback and captain out injured seemingly for the season. Scrum half Sarah Baratin is Italy's all time leading cap winner, 92nd cap today. The partner, Beatrice Rigoni, normally a centre. Ruth Lewis, the Swansea prop, waiting to win her first cap, as is her opposite member, Erika Skofka. Molly Kelly and George Evans waiting to add to the solitary cap they've run so far. There is the new captain, scored an important try up in Scotstoun to beat Scotland in a very close game at the end of last season, Six Nations. Sarah Cox of England in charge this afternoon, abetted by Nicky O'Donnell and Catherine Ritchie. Molly Hodges, the TMO. Well, Gemma, new campaign, what are you expecting from this one? Well, make no doubt about it, today is going to be a massive challenge for them. You know, uh, we haven't beaten Italy, we've beaten them once since 2013, so it's a big ask today. But given the run these girls have had together through the Autumn Internationals, they're bringing confidence in today, so it's going to be difficult, but, you know, I think they can do it. Great opening break by Robin Wilkins. And support there to take them over halfway. 
Gwen Crabb, big tackle on her. Kira Bevan, Gwen Siantirs sets it back up again. Wilkins and Wales early doors keeping ball in hand, and they've got the numbers on the outside as Lake makes the break. Karen Lake still got it. Katie Powell on the outside, maybe should have fed, but Lake held on, and Wales. In a really good attacking position, lovely ball from John to Crab. Wilkins running the show from 10 so far. Powell tries to go the long way round. But good ball retention and going through the phases. Kelsey Jones sets it up again. Wilkins, dummy run from Alex Callender. Lily Crap. Tries to break the first tackle across comes Giordano, the Italian captain, to bring her down. Keris Hale. Lovely little pop by Gwen Crab to Gwen Fiantirs. Didn't try the miracle ball. And it could be on for Wales going left this time, but an interception. Puts paid to that. And all the build-up counts for nothing in the end as Sarah Baratin gets in the clearance kick. Jazz Joyce came across from the far wing. And she has got tremendous feet to beat those would-be tacklers. Hardly got a okay, hand on her initially. And as Italy get hands on ball, penalty for Wales, but what an opening from the home team. That was a great run from Karen Lake, showing all her experience there. She's such a cool, calming influence in the back line. And I'm sure she going to lean on her a lot for the leadership today. But just, you know, holding the pass, seeing the defence come up. And it gets Wales into the 22 in a great position. Going for the jackal, but told to get hands off it. They didn't. And, uh, well, the wind is going to be difficult to deal with. It looks to be behind Wales, although it is swirling around. And uh, Robin Wilkins, who got that break right from the offset. And Kerrin Lake really causing problems for the Italian defence early on. Five out of six successful kicks for her in last season's Six Nations. And she'd be happy to keep at that 80% plus mark. Nice strike. Beautiful strike from Robin Wilkins. And within three minutes, Wales notch up a three-point lead. That's a great kick in these conditions. You can't see it on the TV, but it's swirling round in loops, and you know, to put it through pinpoint position like that is great. And I'm sure Carol will take, Carol will take some of that for holding on to the ball. Martin <laughs> with the restart. Straight out. Straight out, I think. No. Okay. No, it wasn't. Oh. Just as we oh. thought, the ref thought it was straight out, but. No, nope, absolutely yeah. right. Just. First line out for Kelsey Jones. Finds Gwen Crabb. Back, back! Not the best delivery, though, for Kira Bevan. Who's there? Drop, drop, drop. Lovely offload to Alex Callender. And Wales have got their offloading game spot on in these opening minutes. It's intelligent play by Kalinda there. She just she held on to that Italian to make sure we come away with a penalty there. But disappointing from the lineup, you know, we won the ball cleanly. That's got to come down and we've got to get some kind of starter play from that. To just let it bounce around on the floor. It's just, you know, at this level, that needs to be really clean, really clear execution. And they want to keep ball in hand. Karen Lake just chasing down her own kick. Bailey Powell, well taken to Wilkins. 
confronted by a wall of blue, but that's good support in clearing out, making it available for Kira Bevan. She won Lily Crap. No, hands out! Hands out. Well, it's been all Wales in the opening five minutes. I believe Harvey had their hands on the ball. As Joyce takes on Sofia Stefan, well covered by the Italian left winger. Wensley Amters. Bevan just in position, but it's a yard too strong. There's a clear desire from Wales to play behind the Italian team. We want that ball down in the 22. I just, you know, keeping it there once we get there. And the Italians renowned for their counter-attacking as well. So it'll be interesting to see, especially into the wind, how they try and get out from these defensive positions. Melissa Betoni with a throw. And uh, again, to a ball, the scrum halves won't be thanking their forwards from either line out so far. There we are, 80% of the ball for Wales in these opening stages. Crouch! Just the one penalty to show for it so far. Bevan making the most from what ended up as an untidy scrum after initially being controlled well. Keris Hale, but Bethan Lewis can't quite hang on to that one. So the first handling error from Wales. Just a bit of decision making there, you know. To, she's flat, there's no real point in giving her the pass. Just take it in, settle it. We're in the right area of the field, there's no need for ourselves under pressure. Nice quick clean rack off of Kerry's tail then, and, and we're away. But, you know, decision making with a fairly unnecessary pass. Crouch! Find! Set! Okay, if, we, if we're going to come out with that, it's got to be earlier. We can't be on the set. Yeah, of course, yeah. The artificial pitch here at the Arms Park, of course, so it shouldn't present any problems as far as uh, holding the scrums steady goes. Crouch! Bind! Set! Steady! Giordano from eight with a feed to Baratin. Federighi. Okay, and for the first time, Italy get a chance to build. Whoa. And again, not getting away from the tackle area quickly enough. And Sarah Cox is really sharp on that. Wants the quick game, obviously. And it's Jana Franco taken by Kelsey Jones. That is literally up the jumper tactics. Just could have played advantage and see how it went. Okay. Yeah, you're not going to smuggle it out of there very easily, are you? So that second scrum was a much better scrum from Wales, particularly under pressure as opposed to the first scrum. But this is Wales' pressure to soak up now. First time Italians have had some attacking ball. Let's we'll see how Wales handle that. Crouch! Bind! Set! Giordano again to the Baratin. Bigoni. Along the line to Astuni, up from fullback, nicely played. Magathi, 
brought down just outside the 22. Franco. He is certainly one to hold. Watch out for. He's losing his shirt again. Good hit on Betoni. It's an excellent tackle by Gwenthian Pers. Ostuni up from full back again. No, stay out, tackle up, stay out. Silari taken on by Jordana Duca. Baratin, lovely inside ball to Rigoni. It followed her partner all the way. Taken on by Betoni. Good build up by Italy and Wales. Just being pressed back gradually towards that try line. Kadrigi. Italy using the forwards just to take it on, metre by metre. Which a guy. A little deft kick through over the try line. Well picked up by Kayleigh Powell. And out to Jazz Joyce. Joyce on the outside. Across comes Silari. And they needed that cover because even from 90 metres, Jazz Joyce can be lethal. Taken on by Bethan Lewis. Kira Bevan. Feed to Robin Wilkins and the pressure leaving. Clearance kick over the far touch line. So that's the ambition from Italy then. He said two opportunities coming out wide. And you see how crucial the last pass can be. But this from Kaylee for a first start to mop it up. They're obviously going to test her, mop it up and get the pass away. Great. I've seen her ability for Wales and the Barbas. And both her and Hannah Jones missed the Autumn Series because they are playing for Adelaide in the Sevens in Australia. Nice work if you can get it. Funny enough, I never got asked. <laughs> <laughs> OK, move out of the way. Stay there, stay there. Silvia Turani determined to get over that gain line. Rigoni. Baratin to Lucia Gai. And everything comes off the scrum half by the look of it. She's the one who's really calling the string. 33 years old now, 92 caps for her. And all that experience in bringing on forwards, backs, and she thinks the opportunity is right. This time again, just a short pass to Melissa Betoni. Now width to Kapamaji. So got knock on as the tackle, tackle came in, knock just knocked on by Robin Wilkins. There's Baratin again to mop it up. You're right, the amount of experience and how she could command and just, just play this team. And with the nice fast ball she's getting from the reps as well. You know, I've played against her, so it shows how long she's been around. It's a huge amount of experience. You know, it, it's strange, isn't it? Because certainly we up here in Wales and, and most of the uh, UK countries play mostly off 10, but when you, in the men's game, France always play off nine. And it seems like Italy are doing pretty much the same here. When well, you've got a playmaker like that who can command the game, you know, it's, it's a nice, easy process to go through. So, kind of makes sense for this team, I guess. All right. yeah, Melissa Betoni, the hooker, who actually plays out in France, plays for Rennes. Just took a knock in the previous move. She's winning her 55th cap today. There's a lot of experience dotted throughout this Italian team. Horsman on the right and former Pontypridd colleagues Gareth Wyatt and Crouch. Geraint Lewis. Bind. Set. Again, Jordana picks up from eight to set them on their way. Silari. Bye. 
Maratin just asking a bit too much of the tight head Lucia Gai. In possession turned over, and Beth Lewis gets Wales going forward again. Wilkins deep this time. On the outside of the boot, not sure if it's meant as a cross kick for Jazz Joyce or not, but picked off by Michaela Silari. And there's a chance for a counter set up by Stefan to Stumi. Offload to Franco. Out the back door to Betoni. Cleared up by Baratin. Lily Craft wondering if she could go for the steal. And Alex Callender decided to. It came in from the side rather than behind the back feet. Yeah, see, the ball's not out, so you pick the ball up from the wrong place. Alex Callender just questioning things. It's better to ask for uh, forgiveness and permission sometimes, I think. She's asking, you can see her approaching there, she's asking, is it out? It's just too enticing, isn't it, for a back rower? And interesting, and maybe an indication of the strength of the wind. They've turned down a kick for the corner. They're uh, opting for the scrum instead. Crouch! Bind! Italy attacking down towards the River Taff end. As usual, the wind does tend to come off the river. Okay, these guys, you need to get proper fired, please. A bit more protection from the elements at the Westgate Street end. So the girls spoke about the battle of the back row before the game, and the last scrum, it was definitely Wales of back row. They're up and more mobile and away faster. Bind! Italy was sleeping a bit at the last scrum. Set. Out. She's not yeah. it's gone backwards. A little change of mind from Elisa Giordano, whether she's going to pick and go or not, and just left it there. Dummy run from Arighetti. Going to set up a bit more room outside. Franco. Three tries in the Six Nations last year. And good rip in the tackle. And Callender moves it on to against the Empress. Natalia John trying to do the clearance work, but it's come out on Italy's side. Lovely flick on from Rigoni. Almost a lovely flick on, but it's a free play anyway. Calendar comes away with the ball in that, that rip then, but you've got to give credit to the, to the work that... Uh, Beth and Lewis did to hold on to Franco and she's really nullifying the Franco effect that we were expecting today. So credit to both the Francos. Well, she really is a handful of the Italian open side. Giada Franco. Three tries in the championship last year. We've seen her carrying several times already. Pressure coming on the Italian scrum. Yeah. Good scrum. And I think they're quite pleased with that one. Straight to the floor, so she's collapsed. There's nothing better when you're running a team back. So, it's, you know, they haven't given up much territory. The Italians have had the ball for quite a while, and we're still just outside of the 10 metre line. Oh, it was an opportunity to put us back down towards A22, slice of the kick. As they set up for the line-out, there's a chance for us to hear what the Welsh yeah. team are thinking of it so far. Let's go over to Laura Jane-Jones. Gareth, we are 20 minutes into the 2020 campaign. How are you feeling so far? Uh, pretty ner nervous, to be honest. Um, ex excellent start from uh, our girls. You know, we played some really good rugby, but Italy put us under a lot of pressure in the last 10 minutes. Um, you know, I think we just need to get hold of the ball and get through some phases and a bit more territory as well. 
I know you won the toss and chose to play with the wind in this half. How important is it to build a score? Yeah, it's huge. Like but Italy is showing good intent and trying to play. You know, it'll be no different for us. Um, you know, the wind can can be a factor, but if the space is there to play into that. You know, we, that's what we want to look to do. Fantastic. Thanks, Gareth. Yeah, just the one penalty from that really bright opening from Wales. And certainly, Italy have uh, dominated Touch. possession in the Bind. second part of the first half, Set. first quarter. Although playing well, this scrum, tremendous scrum from Wales. That is a absolutely superb scrum. No, and, and we needed that because we had two moments we could have got out of this area. We had um, Wilkins's kick didn't make it up the field, and then we had that not straight line. We're putting ourselves under pressure, so we've got to build from this now. This is an opportunity to get back down into their half and stay there. It's half time in Po, where England are leading 12 10 Grand Thank Slam winners last year, of course, England. And in Dublin, it's 13 0 in Ireland's favour against Scotland. And they kicked off the same time as we did here at the Arms Park, and of course, Ireland will be Wales' opponent next Sunday. Again, it'll be live on S4C. In the 20s here on Scrum 5 on Friday evening from Cork. Good width on the passing from the Italian backs. Lovely pop to bring in Magatti. Super run as well. And the feed off to Ostuni. Best Italian attack of the game so far. Some really good handling. And there goes Turani on the charge. Thundering towards that Welsh try line. Betoni offering herself as well. Good tackle from Gwen Crabb. This is real pressure on the Welsh defence now as Italy build up ahead of steam. Silari tries to free her hands to get the ball out right in the far corner, just five metres from the try line. Guy gets ever nearer. Baratin taking out Duca this time. Kieran, Kira Bevan. Smallest on the field on one of the tall second rows. Really determined tackle. Rigoni has a go herself. Franco in okay, support. Baratin arrives. Back to the left they go to Turani. Desperate defence from Wales. As Italy go into double figures in terms of phases, but can they produce an end result? Jada Franco, no, ever so it. close. Giordano waits, they're up to the try no, line, short. Sarah Cox has a look, no, they're short, she says. Baratin has to dig it out. Rigoni, out wide to Silari, and Capo Maggi loses the ball in the tackle from Kaylee Powell. Massive relief for Wales, looked as though the try was on the cards. But Wales somehow survive. No, leave it, leave it 15. Knock on advantage for Italy as they keep possession and keep on hammering away at this Welsh defence. This is energy sapping stuff for Wales in defence. It will be a huge boost psychologically if they can keep them out. Baratin goes herself. Sarah Baratin okay, again stopped just short. So frustrating for Italy that they're so close, but this time they are celebrating. They've got there. The try had to come, it seemed. And it has done to the hooker, Melissa Bettoni. That's hugely disappointing from a Welsh point of view. That's three errors in the row that have just gifted possession for the Italian. It all comes back to the line out, the Welsh line out on the Italian, uh, on the Italian 10 metre line. Credit to this try, though. Well, it 
may have come from a short distance in the end, but it was a long, long build-up of concerted pressure. Oh, sorry, I've got a check check in my ear. So, is he all right? Sarah, yeah. What I'm going to show you... Yeah. Are you, are you going to the side of the pitch or the big screen? Uh, the big screen's back on, mate, so oh, I'm going to go to that. Brilliant, OK. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I've got check, check, OK, see you, man. I just want to check something, actually, to see... So, what I'm going to show you is the blue 10 try. in front of the ball carrier obstructing a Welsh tackler. OK, is yeah, there no worries. Is there obstruction there preventing a Welsh tackle is the question? Be a three chair in you. the yellow Thank scrum guys. cap, the outside half, who runs in front of Sarah Barrett in there and taking out that Welsh defender. That, those are the two best Paris angles Hale. we've got for you, Sarah. Would right, she have okay, got so to Sarah Barrett in earlier? The 10 is in front of the ball carrier and then takes out one of the Welsh defence. Um, so you're saying no try, and then we'll go back for a penalty on the on the five metre line. Yeah? Agreed. Okay, fine. No worries. That is tough on Italy, okay. but she was in front of the ball carrier. Whether it no had try. a massive effect on things, I'm not totally convinced. But DMO and referee think so. So the try doesn't stand. I'm not sure the ball was ever coming down Kersley's Ker heels. What's she saying? Yeah. I don't think he was ever coming down her channel, but she didn't bite to the tackler, she made her way across. So, a bit harsh, I think. Very harsh. So, unfortunately for Melissa Betoni, try cancelled, and Wales just about hang on to their three point lead. Italy are not going up and Wales have not come away with the ball from their last two line outs. We don't need to overcomplicate it, it's just up tempo ball and away. Well, the Italian is in the crowd making themselves heard. There seem to be Stanley a fair few Italian Stanley flags Stanley. over in that far stand. Say more, Stanley, say more. Okay, once. Well, to a pass from. Kira Bevan put in Karen Lake under all kinds of pressure. And again, it's those unforced errors that are really coming back to bite Wales at the moment. They're racking up and they're keeping us under pressure. I don't think anything especially exciting has come from Italy today, but they've just been attritional and they've lived off the Welsh errors. Well, 80% for Wales in the opening 10 minutes. And now, two thirds of the ball for Italy. Crouched. Just shows how dominant they've been. Bind. In this second quarter. Set. And they want to get shot at that ball as quickly as possible because their scrum is coming under pressure. Silari waited and waited until Lostuni appeared on her elbow. Stefan gets the pass away to Capomaggi. Franco. Wait here, wait. Petoni. Lucky to see if she can get a try that counts so this back, time. So back. Backwards, so play on. Still in Italy's possession. Slow ball. Scrum half tied in. So the forwards do okay, the Red, sensible thing. Don't pin her in. Setting it up Let once again. Come. And there is Let Sarah the Barton come. back up on her feet. Not emerging, but it'll be Italy's putting at the scrum. Just be careful. You can't lie on top of her and pin her in there, and you can't be there. So we're going for a scrum because no one could get out, okay? Yes. Yeah, sensible refereeing in the end from Sarah Cox because there's just a big pile up in the end. Time off. Baratin's not captain, but she's making sure that the referee sees and hears everything that's going on. Oh, that way, yeah, OK. No, 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 you're fine. 
They're chirping away constantly. Pietri Cerigoni, the outside half, just giving the instructions what they're expecting from this scrum. Wales will be really trying to get the nudge on this one and drive them backwards. does come on but Jotama gets them out of it to Balatin brought down five meters from the try line this is where Italy have been camped for a while now but this time much to the relief from the girls in red and it's the work of Alex Callender that gets the penalty Okay, so That's massive for Wales. They've been under a huge amount of pressure and the possession swing is, has been massive to Italy. But they, they huddled in a group and it'd be really interesting to see who Shuan leans on um, for the leadership. There's not that huge amount of caps on the field in terms of experience. And you would imagine that Kerin Lake and uh, maybe Kieran Bevan, they've played a lot together as a unit, those three, in club and regional. So you'd imagine that they'd step up um, because it's not just a one-person job. You know, they need that leadership across the field. Important throw for Kelsey Jones. And Sean Lillycraft does the tidying up, which was much needed. At worst, Wales have come away with a scrum. And that's a decent touch finder from Kira Bevan. And much needed relief for Wales up to the 10 metre line. Crowd not too happy with the extra 20 metres of touch judge <laughs> give Wales there. <laughs> Highlights of all the weekend's events. Six o'clock this evening. Scrum 5 live. And uh, if you want to see this one again, and midnight is the time to switch on the BBC Two Wales. Live from Cork next Friday evening, Scrum 5. Ahead of the game itself and next Sunday on S4C. Don't let don't play on the floor, Wales she's third person. Stolen. No, three round, no! Three round, no! Stop! Vittoria Ostuni. No thought about putting the ball in the air and Italy aren't the ones for kicking much out of defence. They'd rather run Franco again. Winning important yards. Ball's here, leave it. She's made over 50 already. in by Robin Wilkins. Good run by Hannah Jones. The battle of the breakdown, won by Italy. President is in the house. Harold Davis, Grant John, just there as well. And the number of games he's doubtless been to this weekend. The Wales haven't been out of their own half for quite a while now. As yet, haven't conceded though, as Arigetti wins the line out. And Italy get a drive on. 
He did initially, but then Lucia Gai goes to ground. Baratin. Turani. Lost it. No, four, Didn't it lose it forward, though. Good pick up by Giordano. Again, Robin Wilkins claims the ball's been knocked on, but ignored by Sarah Cox. And they have numbers out wide now, Italy. Out it goes to Magatti. And no, what a brilliant bit of work to keep that ball from being grounded, it looks like. Hannah Jones got underneath her. Kayleigh Powell's been hurt in the process. I'm going to check it on the CMO anyway, and then we'll let her get down. But it looked as though Hannah Jones did enough to prevent Maria Magatti getting the ball to ground. David, I'm going to come up to you in a second. I'm just going to make sure that she's okay first, all right? All right, I'll let you guys deal with that. I am, yeah, I'm going to... I've not seen anything. I've not seen anything. Okay, David. So what I'm going to do, um, I want to check the grounding on that one. I've got on-field no try held up, but I want to double-check with you, please, OK? OK, we're checking for so grounding. Cox certainly yes, fell. Please, yeah. decision Hannah Jones had done a work, yeah, but poor Kayleigh up. Powell is absolutely flat out on the floor. That was the one that knocked out Kayleigh Powell, but Hannah Jones, with a bit of help from Lisa Newman, Looked for all money, like a try for Maria Magatti, but brilliant bit of defensive work. And a clash of heads has knocked out Kayleigh Powell. At least she's sitting up now, which is a good thing. Because that's short. And then turned on her back by Hannah Jones. S Sarah, yeah. that's all the angles we have. No, I have one more angle. Hang okay. on. <laughs> I heard one more in the background, no worries. OK, that's pretty definitive. Could the crowd the like it. The ball is clearly not grounded. Yep. Uh, so stay with your on-field decision, please. No try held up, yeah? Yeah. OK, fine. Yeah, as we thought no and try. as the ref thought, no try. So it nearly again denied. <laughs> That's awesome defence from Hannah Jones. I didn't know she started judo recently. And the way she got under that ball and twisted that body round is brilliant. So there's no try and it's held up. OK, so we've got a scrum in the park. This shows right, the difference no that quality pass can make because Italy did the same kind of move 10 minutes ago yeah. and the ball was slightly behind and killed the attack. At that time, the ball's in front and, and they go over the line. So that pass from the inside player is so crucial in okay, any attack. <laughs> Crouch! Now, there was certain concern about Kayleigh Powell, but she's up and she's stayed on. Set! <laughs> Not over yet, though, for Wales. Still have a bit of defending to do. Straight running from Rigoni. Baratin. Franco. Double hit from Lake and Lily Kraft. Betoni this time has got over. Denied earlier, Melissa Betoni. But the pressure was just too much in the end. And the Italian hooker gets the just rewards. And Italy, go ahead. Well, she first crossed ten minutes ago. Brought back for crossing in front of her. This time, with the help of Silvia Turani, it was just no stopping the hooker. As good as our back row has been, that is like a steam train coming over there. That whitewash, everything there. Those two powerful, powerful forwards is what Italy have got. And they know how to use them just a couple of metres out. Just past the post from Michela Silari. It's a 5 3 Italy lead as 
Keely Powell goes off to get a bit of treatment. Uh, see if she will return or not. But that was a nasty head knock she took. She best wishes for a swift return for her. In fact, we hear that she won't be coming back. So it's Paige Randall who wins her third cap on the fullback. Stooney wasn't expecting it, but in the end, read the bounce well. Taken on by Franco. He's clocking up almost 70 metres with ball in hand, the open side. Just in the first half. No, balls here, leave! Right, wait, wait, wait! Once they decide to go aerial to Sofia Stefan, Robin Wilkins, but really it was all too tight to try and work Jazz Joyce down that far side. Yeah. It's the outside half, Beatrice Regoni, who's down. Just after a drink, if that's all right. Second half just underway in Po. A slight lead for England and approaching half time. Still 13 0 in Ireland's favour. It'll be an interesting second half here, Gemma, because Wales will be playing into the wind, which means they're going to have to carry an awful lot by the look of it. That might work out better, actually, if we can keep a bit of ball in hand, because we haven't been accurate in the, in the kick in, so we could be exciting with ball in hand. But I think we took the wrong option then. You know, the forwards were making their way to the touchline to throw that back out to, to Jasmine Joyce. who should have come up and there was some opportunity outside. You know. But I just want to see these backs get their hands on the ball. Federighi delivers the line-out ball. That one did go forward. And that's just the Wales need at the end of this first half. Just a foothold down in Italy's half. Both Kelsey and Gwentley end up putting a few bone shattering hits, and, and that's really going to lift the rest of the team as well. So, we want to see a bit more of that in defence. <laughs> Interesting formation for Wales. Right. Three in a line straight behind the scrum. Set. Everybody breaks right. Kevin Lake with a straight run. Good tackle on her though from Rigoni. From the corner comes Alex Callender. Paige Randall goes okay, in to support. Ball on its way back to Kira Bevan. It's your ball, it's there. When Crab up comes the defence. Lovely slip to Keris Hale. Good hands from the second row to beat the onrushing defence. Well taken by Hannah Jones. Hannah Jones still going. Steps back inside for the corner. <laughs> what a try from Hannah Jones. Unexpected possession, but superbly finished by Hannah Jones to put Wales back ahead just before half time. Nice to have Hannah back in the Welsh shirt. She just glides when she's on the ball. Looks so calm, doesn't know she doesn't need to force it. Keep the leg drive going. You know, she's got two Italians on her, you know, she still makes it six metres. I'm sure Siwan Lillicrap will be claiming that off her back was quite deliberate into the hands of Hannah Jones, but it worked out in their favour and what a brilliant bit of finishing. Well, right at the beginning of the half, they promised a lot, and right at the end of the half, they've delivered the Welsh backs.
Good strike again. Superb, superb from Robin Wilkins. And the extras well appreciated. What a finish to the first half for Wales after being under the cosh for so long to open up a five point gap just what they wanted and shows what they can do when they get the opportunity. Huge kick from Robin right out on the touchline. And we've got to say a big hello to Robin's nan who records and watches every single game. So she'll be replaying that to every visitor, I bet. It was a terrific conversion. And a real boost for Wales just before the interval. If they can just hang on to this or even build on it in the final minute. Good line out ball from Gwen Crab. Wilkins. Lily Crab. Driving up to the Welsh 10 metre line. Well taken by Bethan Lewis. Natalia John. Forwards doing the hard work of carrying Bethan Lewis for the second time. Wilkins. Lake. Now then, Italy will get in a good position, but good work by Kelsey Jones to make sure the ball wasn't turned. Paige Randall, Run. ball spilt. So Italy have one last shot in the dying seconds of this first half. As the clock goes red, Wales will look to keep them somewhere near that 10 metre line. Jada Franco. have the possession again do they think that's enough of a lead no they want more plenty of numbers on the outside but Kira Bevan goes for the kick instead and Silari replies in kind Wilkins booms it out to Paige Randall Newman waiting out on the left outside of Bethan Lewis there is Lisa Newman Newman going for the inside break well covered by Ostuni and Magatti. Juan Lillicrat arrives to take Wales into the Italian half. Crab. Over the ball goes Rigoni, but back it comes to Bevan. Wilkins. Newman just trailing on the inside. Good latch on. Wins Italy the penalty by Bettoni. I'm not sure you're on your 10 carrying the ball and your, your blind side winger cleaning out and the only two in the contact area. There's only one thing that's going to happen against this forward pack of Italy. In the end, Italy say that'll do us. Thank you. We look forward to wind advantage in the second half. Strong finish by Wales. Strong start by Wales. That's when they got their points. Robin Wilkins' penalty initially. And Hannah Jones is try. But Italy very strong in the meantime in that middle period. As it is, though, Wales go into the lead at half time by 10 points to five. And let's go down to Laura Jane Jones who's with Gerard Lewis. Gerard, great try at the end there from Hannah. But an amazing defensive effort from the girls there. How happy are you with that? Yeah, you know, in uh, fairness to it, they've dominated territory and possession. The girls are showing a lot of character, a lot of commitment, uh, sort of hold them out and only give away uh, five points. And obviously the try there at the end has given us a bit of impetus going into, uh, going into half-time, but hopefully we can turn that around a bit in regards territory and possession. The line-out has creaked at times in the first half. How concerned are you about the set-piece? Yeah, it's been, you know, we've been inaccurate in the line-out and, uh, you know, at times where we kept the ball for periods, you know, we, we've looked like we could create chances, but, yeah, certainly an aspect we need to sort out and uh, hopefully we can come, uh, become a little bit more uh, sort of certain in, uh, in uh, those elements. Fantastic. Good luck for the second half. Thank you very much. Beautiful strike from Robin Wilkins. 
so frustrating for Italy that they're so close, but this time they are celebrating. No try. The try doesn't stand. Bettoni this time has got over. Well taken by Hannah Jones. Hannah Jones still going. Steps back inside for the corner. What a try! So Wales started strongly. Italy got themselves back into the game and we now have a fascinating second half in prospect because of those two late tries in that first half, Karen. Yeah, absolutely. Wales started off great. Three points within the first three minutes, exactly how we wanted to start. Um, but then Italy just dominated territory. They dominated possession. They keep that ball well and they finally got the try that they deserved. Um, but we've also seen Wales then come back as well and got that try through Hannah Jones at the very end. Yeah, and she's been away with the sevens, hasn't she? So obviously she's itching to get back into the Wales setter. She is. Hannah Jones has always been a very big attacking threat for Wales from the centres, and I think the experience she will have gained playing out in, in playing sevens out in Australia alongside Jasmine Joyce and Lisa Butchers will be great to bring that back into this campaign now. Italy were really pressing, and they could have gone ahead earlier in the game, but there was a disallowed try, a call from the TMO, uh, and we all agree with this call, obviously. Yeah, great call from the TMO. We can see here Baratine, who's been orchestrating everything for Italy in this game today. But this disallowed try, uh, do, is it, we, oh no, that's the try. So here we go, here she goes. But we can see Ragoni, she's gone ahead of the ball carrier there and she stops Keris Hale from uh, making that tackle. So thankfully for Wales, it got disallowed. Yeah, a sigh of relief, no doubt about it, for Wales. Um, a few of the girls, three of them actually, in this game for Wales, making their first Six Nations start. Kayleigh Powell, full-back. She's had to leave the field, unfortunately, because of an injury. But defensively, she has looked very, very strong, hasn't she? Again, Kayleigh Powell's had an outstanding first half. Um, she's another one that's come through the Wales 7 set up um, and her skill set here picking up that ball under pressure and getting it away to Jasmine Joyce there's not a lot of players that would, have been, that would maintain that much calm and be able to do that on their own try line um, and again here we see her make an excellent cover tackle I think most people would have thought that that would have been a try but Kayleigh Powell out of nowhere makes that hit uh, just to lodge that ball loose yeah I wonder would they have targeted her knowing that maybe she would be quite nervous yeah, possibly. Her first start in the Six Nations, but we've seen what she can do for Wales on the Sevens circuit. Um, she played in the Commonwealth Games. She's got lovely skills. She is calm under pressure, and she's a very intelligent player as well. So she's a big loss uh, having to leave the field for Wales today. Two first starts in the Six Nations in that front row as well. A very inexperienced front row, very young as well, but boy, are they doing well. They are absolutely dominating that scrum. We've seen here they managed to, to turn Italy around, and again, um, they pushed them straight back off their own ball here. So, uh, Gwethlien and Kelsey, you know, like you said, both first starts in a Six Nations campaign, but you wouldn't know it seeing their performances on the field today. Yeah, just embracing the opportunity. It's so good to see that as well. Uh, let's talk then about the Italian attack because Gareth alluded to it in commentary. They seem to be playing off that number nine. Yeah, she's fantastic, isn't she? She's just orchestrating all the movements. Everything is going through Baratine today. She's got so much time on the ball. Here she, you can t tell that she's telling everyone what to do. She's barking her orders out to the forwards. And she's very sharp as well herself around the fringes. And she's keeping the tempo of this game fast, which is um, really quite hard for, for the Welsh defence. Yeah, it's very dangerous, that Italian attack. Yeah, we've got a fascinating second half in prospect, but at the moment, Wales have the lead. Well, let's get another view on things. Laura's got some company. I'm with Philippa Tettia, former Wales 7-15s player. How impressed were you with that first half in Wales? Well, I'm, I'm loving to see their ambition in attack, but equally, the sort of tussle of momentum, they couldn't really keep a grip onto the game for very long, and then let Italy in. But once again, Welsh defence, it's always very passionate, it's relentless, but maybe they just need to not put themselves in those positions to have to be that passionate and relentless on the try line. So a bit more control needed in the second half, I think. We know it's actually a really... Now, there's a lot of new girls who came in over the autumn. Is there a bit of naivety from them, do you think, at times? Um, well, the, the 
change who's actually in the front row. We've got a completely new front row. And as you've seen with their scrummaging, they are fronting up. And actually some of the biggest hits we've had so far in the first half have been the likes of Kelsey Jones. So, no, I think the newbies actually are coming in and really stamping their authority. I think it's just a case of, like I said, having that control to not panic. If it's a turnover or there's a handling error, that's OK. That happens. Don't end up on your try line because of it. Thanks, Phil. Busy day for you today. You're on the Scrum 5 sofa at 7 p.m. this evening. Oh, 6 p.m. on BBC Two Wales. We'll see you then. <laughs> she is Sorry, indeed. Sam. And what a stellar cast we have this evening on Scrum 5 in the club. Jonathan Davis, Gwyn Jones, Philippia, Sean Holly, and Brad Moore, Scarlet's coach as well. Join us at 6 p.m. So this one uh, between Wales and Italy, not the only game going on this afternoon. Ireland are also hosting Scotland and uh, Cleona Maloney with the first try for the home side. And then uh, Seni Naupi as well, extending their lead. So in that all important match for Ireland and Scotland, uh, well, Ireland had the lead 13-7 and uh, many seeing that first one, France, against England as uh, the decider, but uh, England uh, have the lead in that one, uh, but still a long way to go. And remember, if you do want to see highlights of all the women's matches, and if you want uh, analysis on this competition, well, there's only one place to be. It's all about the moment. Moment after moment, and what it all adds up to. The moment you put in a shift for the very first time. The moment you push yourself further than before. The moment when nobody's watching. And the moment that everyone is. It's the moment the whistle blows and the crowd roars. The moment when everything goes quiet. And it's all on you. The women's Six Nations live every moment. Are you ready for it? So live every moment of the women's Six Nations uh, tonight, midnight, on BBC Two Wales, and that is a weekly show where you can enjoy, as I said, all the highlights. Right then, Laura, she's been running around the place. I think she has more company. I'm with Eleanor Snowzill, out injured today. When can we expect to see you back? Well, I'm not sure really, it's a hip injury, so not sure on the time frame. I'm hoping to play some part in the Six Nations, uh, but definitely not for the first two weeks. There's obviously been a huge amount of talk about a new era for the Wales women with changes in coaches. So what will the messages be from those guys in the change rooms at half-time? I think I spoke to them actually just before half-time and they just want us to keep the ball. They're really impressed with our defence, um, but we have to keep the ball. Uh, first 10 minutes was brilliant, wasn't it? And if we could come out, do the same again, but actually finish off our chances, then uh, I think we'll be all right. You're obviously one of the more experienced players in the squad, over 50 caps to your name, but how impressed have you been with these young girls? Yeah, honestly, I love watching them play. Like They've got so much energy about them. Um, they look like they're not on a couple of caps. You know, they, they just fit right in. I think Kaylee has been awesome at the full-back, you know, putting in those last-minute hits and stuff. And um, you've got a couple of youngsters on the bench ready to come on as well, which, is, which should lift the game. How difficult an opposition are Italy, then? In the men's competition, we knew yesterday it was going to be a Wales win. This is a different kettle of fish altogether. Very different. Italy actually beat France last year and finished second, um, which is incredible, really, because normally France and England are the dominant uh, sort of teams in the competition. So they are a very dangerous team. Um, they can score from anything. You see they like to throw the ball around. Um, not too much kick in. I think they might use the wind a little bit more. We might see some more kick in from them. Um, but yeah, they're, they're a great opposition. 10-5 up half time is all to play for, isn't it? Fantastic, Al. Thanks for your time. Thanks. Yeah, all to play for, but Wales do have the lead. 10-5, the half-time score, and things are going very well because, as Eleanor said just there, they are a very good side, Italy, and these girls, they're really stepping up, Karen. Absolutely. Wales are doing really well, especially finishing off that try with Hannah Jones. They now need to start the second half in the same manner. But like Eleanor said, they need to keep possession. They need to enjoy more possession suck the Italian defenders in and when the time is right, release our really dangerous and speedy backs. 
we'll wait and see if there are any changes. But Alicia Butchers, uh, she is a great player. She's been away on the seven circuits as well. Uh, it's a great player to have to come off that bench. Absolutely. She offers a lot of experience in that back row. And like we said, it is a huge battle in the back row today. I think Alex Kander and Beth Lewis have done very well to nullify the Franco threat, which I think Gemma mentioned in the first half. Um, so hopefully that, you know, with Alicia coming off the bench, she'll just add another dimension to that, that attack. I wonder what the message will be at half time. Is it just more of the same? Come on, girls, you've got the lead. Don't let it slip. Let's change things because over the last few years, you know, they've had a draw, they've lost against Italy. Let's make sure we get this campaign off to a winning start. Absolutely. Keep that passion, keep the character going in defence, and just enjoy a bit of more ball. Um, and hopefully, we'll see some more, tr more tries in the second half. Yeah, the defence has been very impressive, hasn't it, Chris Horseman? He looks after things there now. He will be happy. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen the Italian uh, attack is very attritional and I think Wales have done very well to hold it off. Um, we've seen them in their own 22 defending very strongly on the, on the try line. So hopefully they'll be able to put more of that defence in and drive them back. Um, and then we'll keep the ball in our hand, like Cara said, a few more tries for the red jerseys. Fingers across a big second half coming up. Wales have the lead 10-5. Back we go to Gemma and Gareth. Thanks, Kat. Yeah, a few more tries would be very welcome. Try scoring was... A bit of a problem last year, just eight tries in the whole Six Nations campaign. The captain from Hannah Jones, hopefully, will stand Wales in good stead for this one. As immediately a change of tactics from Italy, trying to use that wind and that kick from Beatrice Rigoni, pushing them back to the 10 metre line. It will be interesting to see what tactics Italy employ, especially because it is them chasing the game at the moment. No changes to either side during the interval. Paige Randall at full back for Wales for the injured Kayleigh Powell. Natalia John takes the line out. Wilkins, Shuan Lillycrap. Anna Jones, try scorer at the end of the first half. These are being glossed there these days. Lifted. Gwen Crabb. <laughs> again, Italy's work at the breakdown has been pretty impressive. Maybe Wales need to get those supporting players there just that little bit quicker. Yeah, we're slightly being out-muscled, aren't we, at the breakdown. An incredibly powerful pack. And, you know, they just love getting in, in amongst it and causing some trouble. You can see they like to slow the ball down. And when she's in that position, she isn't getting moved. But like, was it one, two, two players can't move her. And that's a nice, easy win. And look at it with Italy's position now. There is a change, yeah, that's no Sara Tunesi, who's on Line in the second out. row. In she couldn't take that first line out, and that'll give Wales a defensive scrum rather than having to defend from the line out. Certainly be happy with the way the scrum went Fight. in the first half. Set. Especially dominant on Italy's put in. She's going straight in on the angle and straight across. You're number one. Sylvia straight Turani across. coming in on the angle, burrowing in. You're one. That's what made that scrum turn around rather than pressure legally. Another converted try for England, extending their lead to 19 okay. points to 10. Scotland just staying in it. Within the converted try, Donny Brook. Caught on the outside, not straight. Flex. 
scrum, more line out. The wind obviously testing the throwing into the hookers as well. Interest in Italy go for the scrum, but Wales have been struggling at the line out. I think this works in Wales's favour. But uh, we really need to, to figure out what's going on. I think we're overcomplicated things. We don't have that much of a threat from the Italian line out. Let's just make a simple Fight. ball and make sure we win it. Set. Baratin to Rigoni. In from the right wing comes Magatti out to Ostuni. Nicely played to Stefan. Magatti followed play across from Set the right ball. wing. To be in support. No, she's not on the ball, she's on the body. The ball is here. Baratin to Franco. Slips it back inside to Tunesi. Just lost it. And Wales, thankful for the slight error there by Sara Tunesi, just on in the second half, because again, they might be close to getting that try. I think we focused a lot on Franco before the game, but fair play to Italy, you know, they got ball carriers right across that pack, and they put in wheels on the back foot, and they dominate in the tackle line right now, which is why, again, they're five metres out from the Welsh try line. Holding the pressure and Karen Lake getting vital yards away from the try line. Tackle! Tackle! Got her Tackle! knee to the ground. So it has to be released. Picks it up again. It's now Kira Bevan to Gwen Crabb. It is hard work getting out of those tight positions. And kicking distance isn't going to be an option. Here's the ball! There's going to be an element of safety first about it. And it is charged down. And Robin Wilkins is in a battle with Maria Magatti for the touchdown. And it's a very close one. David, I'm going to come up to you. I want to check the grounding. Coming up. Check the grounding. Both went down together. Wilkins, Magatti, who got there first? On field, I, I think, think it's Robin Wilkins. Got their hands on first. But I just want to double check. Who just going to rock and roll that. I think Wales uh, Red have grounded it first. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, grounded by Wales. Okay, Robin Wilkins it. saves the day, um, but it was a mighty blue, close yeah, one. So we'll start with the 22 dropout. You okay? Is that right, David? Yeah, no worries. Yeah, we'll time off, so. You okay? Yeah, yeah. Drop out, yeah. David, just confirm this is 22 drop out, yeah? It has yeah, it was charged down. It's grounded by the worst. So came off Italy, so it will be a 22 metre restart, even though Italy were trying to claim a 5 metre scrum. I think we need to see a bit we more attrition from her. Wales. We, we need, need them, to be you know, five metres out. We need to be punching forward rather than passing across field and, and getting Alex Callender got caught on the outside channel there. And that's what came with that, that charge down. And keeping the restart low. Tunesi putting pressure on, and she has been impressive in the seven minutes she's been on so far, carried a few times already. Sofia Stefan. Betoni slips it to Fedrighi. Franco. Dragged on by Tunesi. And Wales coming under increasing pressure again from all these big ball carrying forwards for Italy. There's Lucia Gai 
the tight end. The loose head, Turani gets in on the action as well. Franco waiting again. She really does get through so much work with ball in hand. Constant threat. The open side he plays for the Harlequins. Fedrigi. Again, the build up. So close to the try line, Giordano. A little pick and go from Betoni. She's looking for a second, but no, held up. Well, it's pretty much a repeat of the first half at the moment. Six. Really brave defence by Wales. They can't break this Italian stranglehold. Man on Johns. Just turned 19 in December, comes on to the base. Another 19 year old Alex Callender. And uh, Mad Dog John will certainly want to get in amongst them. Maybe bringing that passion you're asking for, Gemma. Mad Dog John, is that her name? <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, we need some of it, right? We need something to match this Italian um, attritional, forward, hard hitting game that they're so comfortable in playing. You know, if we could, we can get a bit of that about us and get us out to this area. I think we need a bit of Mad Dog. <laughs> she won, she's put in a shift in defence, isn't she? The amount of hits she's put in. Yeah, that really shows how much ball Italy have had, how much defending Wales have had to do. Every single member of the pack bar Gwen Crabb up in double figures of tackles and Gwen Crabb has got nine, so she'll be joining them very shortly. Crouch! Find! And then what options do they have this time? Set! They've got Silari at standoff on the right-hand side. Rigoni to the left, to the right they go, picked up by Giordano, the captain. Goes on her own. Wait, 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 wait. Tunesi is waiting and receives. Baratin, Rigoni, Silari. Again, desperate step from Wales on the try line. Giordano needed the presence of Robin Wilkins there just to stop by getting the ball out. Short. Back on the try line, Wales again defending. Leave it right. Gwen Crab calling them for work around the corner. That's exactly what they have to do. And they have to rush off that line, not be passive. They stood there though. And the drive over brings the second try for Italy. And they were a bit too passive. Tunesi is the one who comes up with the ball. Sara Tunesi. The replacement and all that pressure again and maybe the Welsh defence a little bit too passive. No. Oh, did she ground it though? No, I don't think she did. And I think Italy are going to be disappointed again. So it was the blue player loses Sylvia Turani, of the ball who was driven over by Sara Tunesi. I've got that after. Right, no worries. Watch Paige okay, Rangel's no foot. She knows exactly what she's doing. She's no lodged that free. She looks at the ref straight away and calls it. Because she did give it on field. The girls were, were having a word. Uh, the Turani Tunesi correction didn't quite make it for Italy. And for a second time, they've had a try turned down. An excellent work by Paige Randall just to get that foot in to help Gwen Crabb on the try line. It's got a feeling about it that it's just a matter of time before Italy get back on level terms. Wales desperate to get away from their own try line. That's exactly what Sean Lillicrap is trying to do for them. Right. 
Kira Bevan. Okay, use the ball. Be very careful this time that she gets the angle right, gets the height on it, and gets the ball away, but not out of the 22 and not out of danger. I would have liked to see Siwan just set, set a target, head down, head to the floor, and get another pod working off of her then, so we could put uh, Kira Bevan in a nicer position to make a kick further downfield, but maybe just one hit up rugby isn't going to give us the platform to get out of our 22 today. Alicia Butchers comes on to replace Natalia John. Huge talent, Alicia Butchers. She's a nightmare on the floor when you play against her. She wins balls, she slow balls down. And uh, she can run with ball in hand as well. She's just come back from seven. So let's see what she can do with a bit of space and ball in hand. And let's see if she can contribute to the aggressive defence that Wales need to be putting in to keep it the late bait. Jordano at the tail, but again, the outside arm this time, called against Italy. What would you like? Captain, what would you like? Come. Yeah, no worries. Half an hour to go, Wales clinging on to that one try lead. But it is going to take its toll, you'd have thought, all this defending. Twice as many tackles they've had to put in as their opponents. Crouch! Find! Set! Better scrum from Italy. But it's Wales who win the penalty. You can see the Italian girls celebrating, quickly taken by Bevan. That's what the Wales need to pick up the pace, get the ball out wide to Paige Randall. Newman waiting on the outside. Good transfer by Manon Johns, even though she took the hit afterwards. No, no, leave, leave. Crab. Bevan shaped for the kick and then fed Bethan Lewis. Oh, lost the ball though. And that is the problem, is hanging on to that possession for longer periods. Knock on, don't shut him. Done so much playing without the ball that when they do get it, you really do have to look after it. Yeah, I looked in the first half that we were gonna, you know, try and play behind it today. I had a great opportunity there. We made our way out to the 22. We've got some momentum. Kick it down behind them. Let's play in their 22. But uh, I don't know maybe the wind is too much of a factor this half. Crouch. Bind. Oh, Set. Family atmosphere watching these games. Ball squirts out and Baratin has to readjust. Okay, tackle, tackle. Stefan steps in as scrum half. Tunesi again offers himself up as first carrier. Rigoni. Baratin pick up on the run. Dangerous pass though. He work out for Magatti. Franco. Baratin spots the gap and is in behind the Welsh defence and looks to go all the way and she does. No, not quite. Just a metre short, but help is on hand and Italy get their second try. I think it's Maria Magatti who got there. Yes, it is the winger supporting the superb break from Sarah Baratin. Scrum half didn't quite have the legs to get there, but superb support from Maria Magatti and Italy are back on terms. She didn't have the legs because Jazz Joyce came and took him from her. How many times has she done that for Wales? 
but unfortunately there was too much support on his shoulder. On the outside, Fens, Giles Joyce there again with a try-saving tackle for Wales. And then too much support from the Italian. There's four, any four of Italian could have scored that. It'd be interesting to see what happened at the ruck. How did she, where did she come from? Silari adds the conversion and Italy go ahead after pounding away on the Welsh try line. No try coming, Wales thought they'd done it defensively, but that's what happened. Nobody guarding on that blind side. And the road clear for Baratin, and despite a brilliant cover tackle from Jazz Joyce, support is plentiful. The try. Just nudge with the conversion, just nudging it to the head. Kick infield taken by Wilkins out to Randall. Oh, just throws the ball away, and Wales are back under pressure. And look at that, one, two, three, four, five, six Italians, all in close attendance. Stefan, they've got their tails up now of Italy after that try. Silari. Franco with a pick and go. Slip pass to Tunesi from Pedrigi. Tunesi. Made big inroads into that Welsh defence. Good angle from Kapomaji. It's a tackle, Wales being pushed ever closer to that try line again. Guy Franco just commanding things around her, but doesn't get past Fedrigi first of all. Benotti is there and just knocked into her own player. And a slice of luck for Wales, they didn't concede a third. Accidental, you just got into the back of your own player, yeah. That's a slice of luck, you say, but you make your own luck in rugby, right? And, you know, they sniffed a chance then Italy from down here in the 10-metre line. I know Paige Randall, I know it's her first game, but, you know, you have to have to keep a cool head at international rugby. She went against the grain, she came back on the inside and, and just threw an apple pass or something. And how quick did Italy pounce on that? You know, they took the opportunity and they're five metres out again. Well, let's find out what they're feeling. Chris Horsman is with Laura Jane Jones. Chris, how important was it to keep Italy out there? Yeah, really important. They're, you know, they've certainly got head of steam up at the moment. Just unfortunately, we're not, you know, able to manage in our possession sets really well at the moment. So, you know, we're spending a bit too much time in our own 22. Girls are defending well, but what we need to do is just get a bit of a position and territory. How exhausting is this defensive effort? Do you start to empty the bench in a minute? Yeah, look, we, we've got faith in our bench and we'll bring girls on and they make, a, make an effort. But I think the key thing is just managing this period of possession and, and just making sure we get a bit of territory down, down in Italy's half at the moment. I think, obviously, with the wind, we've just got to manage how we get up there a bit more smarter. Cheers. Thanks, Chris. No problem. It really is a tough shift defensively for the Welsh girls. Kelsey Jones just back up on her feet. More than three quarters of the game in Wales is half. It has been a rear guard action. You've got a feeling there's more to come because Wales haven't got the luxury. They're trying to go downtown because the wind is in their faces. Right. Set. And again, the Italian crowd getting very vocal. As Alicia butchers 
picks and drives from the scrum. The Wales try and clear the decks. Kerry right, Hale. Yeah, right, yeah. Shield! Shield! And Pierce. It's good. And She's fast robbed player. and turned over. And Stefan gets the support she wants to keep Tackle. that ball alive for Italy oh. to mount another series of attacks. Okay. Yeah. The player down, and it is uh, Kedis Hale, I think, is it? Tom off. We have to stop. He's heading that way. Yeah. Remember, yes. Scrum Just Five Six Nations special live at six o'clock tonight. And a host of guests to discuss what's been going on this weekend and. The highlights from the women Six Nations this game and the ones being played in Ireland and France at midnight next weekend Scrum 5 will be in Cork on Friday evening while S4C will be showing the main event from the Aviva Stadium with the women following again Sunday lunchtime is Caris Hale carrying the ball out the defence I think she just jarred that right knee by the look of it see as it just hits the turf there yeah I think that was it it's disappointing uh, to lose the ball in that position because we know we can't kick exit so everybody knows we need we have to pick and go or to hit tight and, and work this ball out the 22, but we're really loose in doing that, and then the ball spills and we lose possession. But we need to just calm it down. We, we've got one option of an exit, so there's no need to rush, there's no need to be confused. Just composure and work our way out to the 22, and then maybe as we work our way out, we have a bit more room and you know leeway to kick the ball downfield. But just a bit more composure in this area. Grand Slam winners, England, get off to a winning start in France. Scoring for a while in that one, Ireland were 13-0 ahead. Scotland have clawed back a converted try. But Ireland hanging on, and that one kicked off at the same time as this one, so just about getting into the final quarter, you thought. Let's hope that knee is all right, because she's going to lock out this scrum. Giordano keeps it in there, putting pressure on the Welsh scrum. It's wheeled round. Giordano with a pick up the feet to Stefan, and she gets the ball over. As easy as that. Good, solid scrum. Just nudging Wales backward. The penalty would have come anyway. But Elisa Giordano using her experience, keeping the ball at the base, and creating the try for Sofia Stefan. Scrum having a bit of dominance in the first half, but Italy have improved as the game has gone on. And Stefan just keeping ahead. Knew the try line was close enough just to reach out. A lot of rugby at scrum half, but obviously it can do a job on the wing as well. Great effort from Michaela Silari, and suddenly there's a two score gap between the teams.
This is where Shuan's going to have to call on the other leaders of the team now because it's absolutely imperative for the last quarter that we play all our rugby down in their half. And a shout out to Georgia who comes on for her first cap and a shout out to the Ponaclean girls. They've got another rep in the Welsh team. Yeah, she comes on to place, replace Bethan Lewis in the back row. Yes, touched on. That's exactly what Wales wanted. Just a chance to get straight back into this game. Just nudged forward by Silvia Turani, even though she didn't manage to regather. Same move again from Wales. The two wingers Trips. straight behind Robin Wilkins. Binds. Set. So nobody out on the left for Wales. Guess which way they're going to come. Jazz Joyce. Can't get Tackle. past the first line of defence. Sean Lillicrap. Wilkins to Kerrin Lake. Nice little step inside the crowd. Egging them on. They really want to see a Welsh try back into this one. Taken on by Manon Johns. The ball's here. Don't go. No. Wait, wait. <laughs> playing the nine. You're playing Taylor the player Bevan without the ball. Taken out before she had the ball. No, no, she's, she's got it in her hands. It's here. A little dink for the corner. Lovely Robbo! On the end. Yeah. It's too tempting to take out Kira Bevan. I like to see that then. There's not even any kind of chat about decision making. Robin Wilkins just drills that straight into the corner. When Crab takes a line out to try and get the drive on. Kelsey Jones takes up a position. And the crowd really urging them forward. They've been slowed down, if not stopped. Still moving. Now they go to ground. Wilkins, it is advantage, penalty advantage, well taken by Kerrin Lake. Lake tries to drive Please. on towards that try line. Kira Bevan, ball slowed down slightly. Sean Lillicrap gets knocked back in defence. Kelsey Jones to Gwensley and Pierce. Still Wales have a penalty advantage. Now they go wide, Wilkins. Anna Jones. Ball Please. is there, scrum half arrives. Wilkins to Joyce, plenty of Italian defenders Again, waiting. Tackle, tackle. Georgia Evans. Little dink over the top from Bevan. Free play. His advantage is still <laughs> being played. And Franco is there. First, but Wales knew they had a penalty coming. So maybe a repeat performance from that line out drive is what they'll go for first. That's the best intensity we've seen from Wales from the from the first ten minutes. Much better play. Really great when we can get Hannah and Karen Lake into the game. It really changes the, the kind of dynamic of the team. Just unfortunately we couldn't finish out wider. Now these are the tries in the second half that have put Italy ahead. Sarah Baratin with the break. And the support from Maria Magatti to draw them level. And then to give them the cushion, Sofia Stefan. Still plenty of time for Wales. It's a two score lead, yes. And a try now. And certainly put them right back in it.
They go simple to Gwen Crab, that's just what they needed. Kelsey Jones round the corner, Kelsey Jones is there. <laughs> it's as easy as that, very well worked. Simple line out, front deal from Kelsey Jones. And the hooker puts Wales straight back in it. We need to see that line out again, because I'm sure that was a 13-man line out. And I just said we need to get the centres in the game. They put the centres at the tail of the line out. They didn't use them, they went round the front, but imaginative and it got us got us a try so we'll take that yeah while the italians were busy defending what they thought was going to be a drive kelsey jones finding enough space in the far corner to squeeze home She's feeling it, but she's brought some real physicality to the game, hasn't she? She put in some massive hits in the first half and carried really strongly. So, yeah, she deserves that today. Robin Wilkins put over a superb conversion from the right-hand side touchline in the first half. Can she match it into the wind in the second? <laughs> Not quite, though. The wind was too strong that time. But Wales are back within a score with 15 minutes left to play. Down. Georgia Evans. Newman. That's Joyce, rather. Gone over to the far side. And outside backs haven't had too much attacking opportunities. Johns brought down just outside the Wales is 22 and they're having to battle hard to get out of their own territory. And Stooney to return Wilkins's kick. No, no, please. To Nezzi. Fedrigi. Side from one winger to the other. She ripped it and then it went forward. Okay. Knock on. No, no, she ripped it, then dropped it. Just lost. Ball ripped as well as try to regather possession, but just spilt forward. Did last year Set. with two defeats against France and England and a draw against Italy sandwiched in between but finished way. strongly okay, with we need to both get wins in Scotland and home to Ireland. Pop your legs underneath you, okay? Keep your spines nice and Italy, tight. draw against Wales, yeah, defeat no, to England, yeah. but three wins against Scotland, Ireland and France. So bind, bind Second, nice and high uh, best me. showing in the Six Nations. Right. Maybe the autumn preparations weren't Ready? so good. The 17-all draw against Japan and 
a 60 point defeat to England. But, uh, Andrea Di Giandomento, <laughs> the Italian head coach. Crouch! Boys! Giada Franco. Set! Yes, that's quite outstanding today. 87 metres, 15 tackles. Silari to Stefan. Randall trying to drag her over the touchline. Kept it in play to Silari. Baratin. Wales just sensing a chance to steal it. And they have. Okay. And for once, the Italian handling yep. not as ha okay. accurate as it has been. She has to allow the ball to come out. She moves. There you go. Ten minutes. And Italy have only used the one replacement so far. Just in the second row at half time. And, uh, Tunisia's carried over 50 meters just in this half. Yeah, quite an impression. And as Turani gets them back on the front foot, Betoni loses it. One, and two. another scrum for Wales. Another opportunity lost in the line out. It it's massively overcomplicated, it's like a pantomime, I don't know what's going on. Um, you know, Italy are not fast enough but in defence, you know, and, and Wales are just making it more complex and difficult than it needs to be. But, you know, in terms of an attacking opportunity, we could be in their half now, but here we are again. But maybe a better scrum. That's what the crowd want to see. Wales is outside backs with ball in hand. Seen too little of it. Evan looking for a gap, but Giordano saying no chance Not around there. Wait. Wait. Johns links up. Joyce. It's obvious. Who the crowd think tackle, to create tackle, something from nothing. Tackle. Former Olympic Sevens player. <laughs> That's disappointing for Wales. After working so hard to make it up the halfway. I think we're seeing an evolved player of Jasmine Joyce. I think historically she's always kind of enjoyed staying on the wing, but we've seen a really gutsy performance from her today, which she's happy to take on. She wants to be involved, she wants hands on ball, and she'll take on their back row. She's running into big, beefy forwards, and she's not giving up that ball without a fight. So, but maybe the ambition is, is to get her into a bit more space before we give her hand in ball. Betoni, try scorer in the first half for Italy. Good pressure from Manon Johns. But Italy hang on to the ball. And again through Tunesi. She's livid of herself for losing it in, in, the, in the end. And she enters, sets it up again for Wales. But again, Italy managed to slow it down. Get the defence in place. And the narrow defending though, Wales could find a way on the outside. It's exactly what they do to Paige Randall. Randall 
It's put the ball. Oh, well taken. Superbly taken by Maria Magatti. And Italy needed that. Stefan. Anna Jones wrestles her to the ground. Baratin. Federighi. Now it's time for Italy to do all the hard work. Keep the ball away from Wales and fans. the penalty will help. And Baratin with a quick tap and go. See if she can win another 10 metres. Tunesi up to halfway. Final five minutes approaching. And oh. the mistake comes from Rigoni. And rather than pushing Wales back, at least Wales have a line out in Italy's half. Scrum half. Fion Lewis. That's my fault. I need to put a better mark down, okay? Right, just step over. Right, there's your mark. Crab. Fion Lewis to Wilkins. Lily Crab. Hannah Jones. And again, the defence is narrow. And Newman this time has a chance to run round the Italian defence. Don't touch it! Don't touch it! Wales trying to up it at the end in the final five minutes to get this score. And a bust comes from Butchers. Support from Gwen Crabb. And Italy's defence looking a bit ragged at the moment. Maybe better off the other side, but... They are down in Italy's 22 now. No, slow, no. slow ball. Georgia Evans to Wilkins. Lake just behind Randall. Randall brought down on the 22. In goes Kelsey Jones. And Wales have the penalty. And now, can they produce the moment that'll steal this game? This is the urgency and the tempo we want to see from this Welsh side. Cracking line out goes all the way wide. A hell of a pass from Hannah Joe for Jad on the outside. And now we're back into this great position to launch something. They're planning something. They're huddling. Something's on. But I want to see what ambition the backs can have from here. Now for the first time, I think the Welsh crowd is louder than the Italians. Crab at the front, but it's lost, and the chance is gone, it looks like. Two moves, two moves! They tried right, to keep it as simple go. as possible, but Italy come. knew how Stop important it was. Like Contested the throw, and Silvia Turani picked up the spilt ball, and now they have a chance to work their way out the defence. Use the ball! Rigoni clears the touch. Italy survive, but Wales still have... A good position to attack from. Time may be running out, but Wales are still in this one. Just the try will do it. And again, Gwen Crab is the target. That's better worked for Shuan Lily Crab. Kerin Lake. Italy desperately trying to get defenders out wide. Good hit on Keris Hale. Don't keep hands out. Hands out. Kelsey Jones. Manon Jones, a scrum half to Georgia Evans. Less than two right, minutes see, remaining hands out, hands for out. Wales to get what would be a winning try. 
They've been under pressure for so long in this game, but it's still they're very much in the hunt. Oh, lost the ball though in the tackle. Picked up again by Turani. This time Italy keep ball. They need to do so for about 90 seconds to secure the victory. There's Franco again. As ever on hand. Okay. You're perfectly legal. You're absolutely right, but there was no advantage, okay? So we come back. And it'll be a chance for Italy to clear, knock on, it'll be a scrum for them, that'll take time. And Gemma, you're the one who's choosing uh, player of the match today. Yeah, it's been a hard decision to make because Baratin has been outstanding in leading in leading this pack and this Italian side. I think Tunesi has been awesome since she came on, but it has to go to Franco. Uh, you read out her stats ten minutes ago, and she's head and shoulders above everybody on that field today. Yeah, she has been excellent as the open side flanker. As you said, Tunesi's made such an impact since coming on as well. 60 metres and 11 Crouch. tackles just in the second half. But uh, Franco, Boys. 91 metres, 17 tackles, Set. offloads Stay. as well. And she has been outstanding and a constant throw on the outside. But so has the scrum half. And good play from the skipper again, Giordano, just taking the pressure off when Wales were desperate to get their hands on the ball. One or two more carries will do it for Italy. The clock is about to go red. It does so. And the message, if it gets across, will be that Italy have got their first victory. Now they need to put the ball out of play. Do they realise it? Yes, I think they do, yes. Beatrice Rigoni does. And she puts the ball out of play. And Italy celebrate with a win at the arms part. It is desperately close in the end. But the hard work that Italy had done for long periods, keeping Wales camped down on and near their own try line, paid in the end. And despite the comeback by Wales, the three tries that Italy scored got them off to a winning start. The disappointment, obvious on the faces of the Welsh players. They gave it all, but they came away with a losing bonus point, while Italy have the win. It's finished. Wales 15, Italy 19. So, Wales start their 2020 campaign with a defeat. Heartbreak, really, they were ahead at half time, but Italy came out so strong in that second half, and you can see why they finished this competition in second place last year. Karel, I guess um, it was always going to be tough against this Italian side, wasn't it? And in that second half, uh, they came out, as we mentioned, so strong, and Wales just couldn't quite keep the ball, give it the respect that they needed. Yeah, that was a brilliant team performance by Italy today. Um, when they took to the field, you could see the confidence that they have, and they're really sure of the capabilities of the team. I thought the forwards were outstanding with their ball carrying and the, the, the power they had to keep that um, team moving forward and also those dangerous backs. Uh, both wingers getting a try at the end as well. Yeah, so they'd be really pleased with that performance. And they came out, they scored two tries early on Italy in that second half and I guess that maybe highlighted some weaknesses in that Welsh defence? Yeah, absolutely. I think, like Carol said, the um, the ball carrying from the, the Italians was outstanding throughout this game. Um, they played off the nine, they ran hard and they attacked around the fringes. Um, we see it here, um, Barrington does it brilliantly. She identifies the gap where Wales have overfolded, um, makes that ground and then her support runners just, just come through and finish off the try. Yeah, and Wales will be disappointed, I guess, that they couldn't quite keep them out because they were giving such a defensive effort but uh, those weaknesses those issues they cost them dearly yeah they were and the italian played very clever here we can see wales just slow to come up off their line if Paige randall would have come up then she would have been able to put her tackle in but yeah yeah lots of work to do around the fringes and in that defensive line keeping that line speed going well i think we can hear from the player of the match uh, she's with laura Jada, a huge game, huge result. How tough was it out there? Oh, it was, it was really, really tough. We we knew that we knew that play here will be will be like that, but happy to get the result here today. Were you surprised by Wales's defensive efforts? Uh, absolutely not. We we seen the their 
autumn's games and the last one last uh, last week so we knew that they will come uh, really strong against us today and yeah it's it's you know it's the first game yeah it's probably we have to improve ourselves a little bit better in attack but yeah their defense was massive today I think the TMO wasn't on your side at times. No, no. So how do you keep the team positive when it keeps going the other way? Yeah, it's it's quite difficult to be honest. Uh, we everybody was a little bit down after the second or the third try not given. But I think that this is the Six Nation. You know, this the games will be all like that. So we just have to keep going and score the tries and don't give the the chance to the TMO to say yes or no. We need to score more and clinical. Thank you, Jada. You are the Six Nations player of the match. Thank Congratulations. Much. Chris Horseman's here. Chris, bitterly disappointing, but how pleased are you with the performance overall? Uh, yeah, the aspects of the performance we'll be really pleased with. I think the main thing is you can't fault the effort, particularly in that second half when our backs were against the wall. I thought that was an outstanding defensive effort from the group. Uh, look, you know, it is a young group and we're building for 2021. Uh, there's some things in that, that game we'll get a lot of learning from, which is the real positive. So, yeah, we're disappointed because, you know, we, we wanted to win and I think there were elements when we got the ball in our hand. We did look, uh, we did look uh, good in attack, but ultimately we just didn't manage conditions and we didn't manage the transition of the zones well enough today. And uh, fair play to Italy, they did well. Thanks for your time, Chris. No problem, thank you. Well, Shuan Lily Crap Wales captain joins us now. Chris was just saying that he was disappointed. I guess you share that as well. Yeah, you know, that, that wasn't the result we wanted today. We've been working really hard. Um, you know, we, we thought that we could have had the result today, but it wasn't meant to be. But what I can't fault is the girls' effort defensively. How many tries that we stopped, you know, if you look at the possession of the match, I don't think we actually had much of it. But what we've got to do is look after the ball better, and that's why it's disappointing. We wanted to play more, more um, attacking game, which we weren't able to do today because we couldn't keep the ball. Ireland, uh, they face Scotland today. They look like they're going to win that one. That's the next challenge. And can you put those things, you know, right before next week? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we've taken confidence in training. We've been working hard. You know, we're a tight group and the girls are emotional now. And that just shows, I think, what it means to them all to, you know, it's a close game. But to be that upset now after the game is we can channel that into training and we definitely can go out to Ireland and put in a good performance. A big week for you to get that right for next week. Thanks ever so much. Thank you. I'm going to let you go, Shuan. Yeah. Um, I'll bring the girls in uh, as well. Yeah, Go back to your team, yes. Uh, um, Ireland have won that match, actually, 18-14 against Scotland, so that is going to be a tough test for them to go against a team that's got a bit of momentum next week because they have to try and rebuild very quickly, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a big game for Wales. It's, it's hard uh, playing away against Ireland. Um, they showed today that they've got a lot of hunger. They've bruised from the last Six Nations, finishing last. So they've got definitely a point to prove as well. But they will take positives from that match, as they mentioned, the girls that were having their first experience of the Six Nations. Yeah, um, like Sean said, there were a lot of things to build on there. Um, Wales did get two excellent tries, so that's something to you know build on into the next game. Um, and if they can just focus on keeping that ball alive I think in attack then we're going to see a lot more if we can get the ball out to the backfield a bit more um, our backs didn't really get into the game today um, so hopefully they can you know use the centres a bit more in the next game and I think that will definitely Girls thanks very much for your company this afternoon well it wasn't the win that Wales wanted but they go again in Donnybrook on Sunday we'll see you very very soon goodbye Tony this time has got over Anna Jones still going, steps back inside for the corner, what a try! Palatin spots the gap and looks to go all the way, and she does! No, not quite, just to meet this off, but health is on hand! Giordano with a pick up the feet to Stefan, and she gets the ball over, and Italy celebrate with a win at the Arms Park!